A minus 2B. Remember the original A was down 3, right 3, wasn't it? So that's why I went. I went down 3, right 3. Now, I think the original B was down 1, left 3. But since this is mi minus 2, it's, you're going to have to multiply each of the um, components by 2 and go opposite direction. So I'm going to go, instead of going down 2, I'm going to go up um, 2 and then over to the right 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do you all see that? And then connect from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one. Notice I have everything labeled. That's what I expect, okay? When you just got 4A, that's scalar multiplication. You're going to multiply each component by 4. So um, I think it was down 3. I'm going to go down 12 now into the right 12 instead of right 3. Does that make sense? Are there any questions on the drawing part? All right. Number eight, check your work. There's the component form. Three, negative two, magnitude, square root of 13. Did you notice there's some misnumbering? Sorry, we skipped nine, three, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, so it went from eight to fourteen. Sorry about that. So, eight is that. Number fourteen, you're um, multiplying three W plus two B. Plug it in, combine your components, you get four comma negative nine. Number 15 is three times vector u plus four times vector v, and you get two comma 24. We we'll probably have a homework check tomorrow, guys. 12, component form is negative 11, comma 29. Remember, you're going to multiply this by negative 4. When you distribute that negative 4, you use that negative. Just put a plus there now. Number 17, you got to do what's inside the grouping symbols. Do that first, and those symbols mean to find the what? Magnitude. So I did that. Found that 0 and negative 9, did the magnitude, and the magnitude is 9. So that is your answer, not that. That's your answer right there. It's 9. You want to box that in. Your tests have been posted. If you have not seen them now, now when I get finished grading all the makeup work, we'll pass them back. Number 18, do what's inside of it, and then you get 4 square root of 5. 19 through 22 was the dot product. Those are real easy. Get negative 3. Number 20, negative 54. 21 is 8. 22 is 4. 21 and 22 are in linear combination form. You see how I did that? 4 times 8 plus 4 times negative 6. 22, 8 times negative 1 plus 6 times 2. What does the word orthogonal mean? That the vectors are what? And that means they meet at a what? Right angle. And how do you know if, there are two, um, if the two are orthogonal? Do the dot product and you get what? Zero. Very good. So the next part is you have to determine if they're orthogonal. Well, you got to do dot product. So number 23, you get 8 and it's a no, 24 is 0, a yes, 25 is a yes, and 26 is a no. Let's look at that diagram. If you did not do that diagram because it's poor quality, I understand. So here, if you want to draw it better, right there is what it's supposed to be.
Ah. <laughs> what now? E, the, it's still pointing that way. Any other questions so far? This is A plus B, and the thing you do is strictly look at this picture see if it's drawn to match the um, description. A plus B equals E. What's wrong with that? E should be going the other way. It should start at the tail of the first one and end at the head of the second one. So it's not drawn traditionally. So that's false. But how can I make that true by putting equals what? Negative, Negative E. Do you see that? you got to change one side of it. Just one. Would you ever draw something that says A plus B equals negative E? No, you would draw it the right way. But you're having to look at this and see if it matches up. Okay? <laughs> now, how do you know something equal to zero if it starts and ends where it started? You got me? And it's all drawn correctly. So 32. D plus A plus B plus C. Is that drawn correctly? Did it end where it started? So that's a true statement. Okay. 33. B minus E equals G minus L. Which side of that is drawn correctly? I mean, which one of these is correct? G minus L because that's not drawn. That needed the minus there, didn't it? So we could change this to B what? Plus E. That's what I would say is false B plus E. I'm not going to give you one like that on the test, but that's B plus E. 34. Does A and C look like they have the same size? Yes, that's true. Alright. We are about to start looking at our learning targets. So we have three of them today. Alright. First one, we're going to learn how to graph in the 3D coordinate plane today. Where's my coordinate graph table? Okay, start passing. Get you two a piece because you need to put this in a notebook and use this whenever you need it. Alright, here we go. If you already have your graph paper, you can be drawing your axes. So we're going we're gonna to draw one like this. That's going to be my x-axis. Then I'm going to draw one like this. It's going to be my y-axis. And then I'm going to draw my z-axis going up and down. I know you're going to draw better straight lines. There's your 3D coordinate plane so far. X, Y, Z. It's pretty neat, isn't it? So we're going to graph a point in each quadrant. They have four quadrants just like what you're used to. So let's plot point A. Let's say 2, 5, 4. We're going to plot the point 2, 5, 4. Now, my next thing, are these tall order pairs? No, it's not a pair. What do you think these? Are called order triples. You're plotting order triples now. In 2D world, it's ordered pairs. In 3D world, you're doing order triples. All right, so here we go. We're graphing the point 2, 5, 4. And put A right here because you're going to label it as A, okay? So if I'm going to plot, you start at the origin, okay? So I'm going on my x axis to the right, to watch this, 1, 2. Then I'm going to go on my y-axis up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm right there. 
And now I need to move up on my Z how much? Four. One, two, three, four. So there's my point A. So I went two on the X, five on my Y, and then I went up four. You see how that works? That's pretty neat, isn't it? It's like a floating point right there. Mm-hmm. And then it's like the height. Yeah, the height. Yep. All right. Let's do another one. Let's do this one. B is 4, 6, 2. Let's graph that one. 4, 6, 2. And all three of them positive, so it has to be in quadrant what? 1. 4, 6, 2. All right. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 1, 2. That's what those projects used to be. You had to build that and model it in space. But we're not doing those projects because I don't have room for them. And I know some of you stress right now. I said a project was sitting over. The edge. So we're not doing that project this year. This is what we're doing instead. You're going to graph it on graph paper. We'll deal with that. Okay. All right. All right, let's graph another one. Negative 2, 4, and negative 5. Negative 2, 4, and 5. So watch this. Negative, I started my origin. Am I going right to or left to? Negative two, four, and negative five. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start my origin. Go left two. Then go up four on my y. And then I'm going to go up five or down five on my z. Mm-hmm. So I went left two and went up one, two, three, four, and then down five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's floating somewhere down in quadrant two over there. All right, let's graph this point. Negative three. Negative 4 and 2. Bless you. Alright, so I'm going to go left on my X. 1, 1, 2, 3. Down 4. 1, Two, oh, sorry. One, two, three. Then one, two, three, four. Up to one, two. So it was negative three. So it one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Up one, two. Let's do one more. E. 5, negative 4, negative 1. 5, negative 4, negative 1. Start my origin. Go right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1. So like this would be considered over quadrant one, two, three, four.
But I'm never going to ask you quadrants because the points, it kind of gets confusing, but that's the way the quadrants are. Like this is like, think of it like a cube here. That's quad three. There's a cube, quad four, cube, that's quad two. Uh, all right. How do y'all feel on that learning chart? Good? You learn, hey, you le you've done 2D, now you learn 3D, and now you'll learn another plane in a few weeks. We're not doing 4D, no. All right. So I need a hand signal. We're good on the 3D? And I gave you some graph paper so you can practice if you want to, and let me check it, okay? But that would be part of your test. I'll give you a graph, and you got to label some. You got to graph some points, okay? All right. Number two. Let's turn to page five in our notes. Okay. On page five, we just did the top part. On page five, you see the difference there. You got that. You got order triples, and you want to find the component. You see where Z is being introduced now? X, Y, and Z. Magnitude. You know how we did a squared plus b squared? Just think about a squared plus b squared plus c squared, okay? That's a long form of just a squared plus b squared plus c squared is the magnitude, okay? You said, Mr. Answer, so if linear combination is i and j, what will be it in the form? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So it's i, j, and k now, you got me? So if you see it's in linear combination, i, j, and k, okay? Represents that other component. All right. So on number five, let's do these problems. We want to write that in component form. What now? Okay. So um, I'm going to say negative one minus a negative two, four minus a negative five, negative two minus a negative five. Double negative. And you get the component form 1, 9, and 3. Did you get that, Mason? Now to find the magnitude of this vector, 1 squared plus 9 squared plus 3 squared. Number six, three minus a negative four, six minus a negative two, negative six minus one. Double negative. That is component form. Magnitude seven squared plus eight squared plus negative seven squared. Help me out, that's forty nine plus sixty four plus forty nine. Where all does that add to give you? One sixty two. Let's be careful. That one might be able to break down. Oh yes. So if you break that down, one sixty two. 2 times 81, that breaks down to 9 times 9, which breaks down to 3 times 3, 3 times 3. You've got two groups of 3, so that's going to be 9 square root of 2.
That's not too bad, is it? That's as hard as this. There's three less in this unit. We're about done with number two. So 2D was first week, 3D is today and tomorrow, and then we do parametric equations next week. All right. Here we're just doing operations. So you're going to say 4 times what? V and 2 times what? There's no tricks to it. Now that you learned about vectors, now when you think back to ACT, you went, man, that could have been easy, couldn't it? So that's be 12, negative 24, 8. Add your components. And that is your solution. Okay, I'm going to do number 8 down here under 7 so I have some room. So 2 times W minus Z plus 3 distribute What does that minus do to thing that vector? It changes the sign. Did y'all get 9, negative 10, negative 7, or 8? Okay, because I did that kind of quick. I'm trying to do next, Dave. Where did you do that at? Uh, number nine. Oh, gotcha. Well, number nine, did y'all get 12, 16, negative 56? Mm -hmm. Okay. And number 10, I got 9, negative 42, and 45. Check your work. Graph. All right. 
Let's turn to page 7. Now we're going to do the dot product. Same concept with 3D. Huh? 9, negative 42, and 45. Check. Did you get that, Jack? No. Okay, recheck your work. We're not going to do eight problems of dot product because you're all intelligent. I think after about three or four, we're, we're going to be done with dot product on this. Same concept. You're going to multiply one times what? And then two times what? And then one times what? That gives me zero, negative two, and three. Gives me one. Is that orthogonal? No. So your dot product is one, therefore it's not orthogonal. Number two, one times what? Plus two times, plus three times. Mm -hmm. I get 12, is that orthogonal? No. Try to do three and four. So tomorrow we'll take our quiz, go this home, and you practice a little bit more, and we might start parametric tomorrow. Yes. We're still waiting. I asked my boss the other day. She said they're, they're still waiting for a response. 